So I've been playing on my new RG Ally X every day for hours since getting it at launch four weeks ago. Let's blast through the 13 aspects I love about the Ally X and also the 11 things I'm not too keen on, including one I wasn't expecting. Plus I'll share whether I think that you should buy or upgrade to the Ally X. So let's dive straight in and at number one of the things I absolutely love about the Ally X is this new black finish. My old white Ally got dirty pretty quickly and I've always loved my tech products in black and this just looks incredible, especially playing in lower light environments. Although there is one slight disadvantage to it being matte black, I'll come on to shortly. At number two is comfort. And with the Ally X being slightly thicker and also the fact that the corners are rounder, it just makes gaming on the Ally X for hours such a comfortable experience. I love how we don't need to rest our fingers on the rear M1 and M2 buttons now, and it really does have a good heft to it, which is especially welcome for those of us with larger hands like I do. Linked to this at three is the fact that not only is the Ally X just so much easier to grip girth wise, no. But I absolutely love that Asus have actually embedded tiny little RG letters into the grip itself. This really gives off a premium feel and also why it's so, so great to hold for longer play sessions when our hands do get um, a little sweatier. At four is I love how the fingerprint sense is now recessed and it now does seem much more accurate. I don't know whether this is because it's a brand new and better fingerprint module or the fact that it is recessed, which makes us finding the groove much easier, but it does make logging in so much easier regardless, which is a big thing. The fifth feature I now love on the Ally X are the redesigned triggers, in that the LT and RT buttons now seem much bigger and more pronounced and some other LB and RB top buttons now have an incredibly satisfying click. At six, and this was one of the biggest reasons I upgraded to the Ally X is the thumbsticks. And these are now fantastic. They have so much more tension and with them having a groove, they now offer much better grip. Although there was something I needed to get used to that I'll come on to very soon. Another huge upgrade at seven over the original Ally that I absolutely love on the Ally X is the redesigned D-pad. If you play a lot of retro or fighter games like me, then this is a huge improvement. And one of the key reasons to upgrade. By the way, if you're a fan of playing retro games like I am, then you have to check out my fully updated guide using the fantastic Emidec app, link in the description. The eighth aspect I've loved about the Ally X is the thermals, in that the fans are not just super quiet so that they're barely noticeable now, but the fact that they are much cooler too, which is insane. Asus have really set a new bar for an amazing cooling system on a handheld. I covered a fan test compared to the original Ally in a recent vid, link in the description. But here's a quick snippet. At nine is the SSD storage, and it is so awesome to finally have a whopping one terabyte included now on the Ally X. I've got 42 Steam and Game Pass games installed, including the humongous Modern Warfare 3, and I was always so conscious on my old Ally of the measly 512GB that always seemed to fill up fast. And with the Ally X now having the M.2 2280 SSD format, these are really well priced. And I'm thinking of upgrading to a 2TB SSD soon like almost half of you've done, as voted on today's community daily poll on the channel. Speaking of storage, at 10 is another massive reason why I got the Ally X, which is finally a working SD card. Just a minute. Yes! Finally, Asus! Thank you so much! Alrighty then! <clears throat> Sorry about that. Being able to finally use an SD card is such a basic and trivial thing. I've used mine these past four weeks for all my retro games with zero issues. And again, for me and in my opinion, this is another key reason in upgrading to the Ally X. At 11 has been able to install Game Pass games natively. And I know the original Ally has the ability to do this, but not many YouTubers talk about what a game changing feature this really is. Because if you're like me and only recently getting into PC gaming these past couple of years from being a console gamer, in which case we barely have any Steam games, like I've only got a 16, then being able to download onto our Ally X Game Pass games is such a huge advantage over non-Windows based handles like the Steam Deck. At 12 is the new Armory Crate 1.5 update that shipped with the Ally X. Again, thankfully the original Ally has got this too, but this has totally changed the look and feel of the X, with it now having a much more console-like feel, which I have loved these past four weeks. And finally at 13 is the biggest and most important. I'm gonna talk about this as part of my overall score of the Ally X in just a moment. And now let's talk about the 11 not so great aspects of the Ally X.
So the first not so great aspect of the Ally X is that out of the box it is badly optimised for gaming, with the fact it sets up Microsoft Office slapping us in the face about this. Thankfully I've done a super easy 14 step optimization guide, link in the description, with crucial steps like turning off virtual machine platform that is essential to get the Ally X fully ready for gaming. At two was that in the first few weeks of the Ally X's release there was a super annoying bug that caused constant vibration. Thankfully this is now fixed that I covered in this vid, although there was a two day delay from when I found a fix by going through random forums to when it was actually officially released in Army Crate, so hopefully updates can roll out quicker moving forward. Linked Army Crate at 3 is the Army Crate load time, in that it takes about 15 seconds to load for some reason and it's not skippable. So hopefully Aces can optimise this and also allow us an easy way to add custom boot up animations from within our ally community. At 4 is that when holding the Ally X one handed, like momentarily grabbing a drink with the other hand for example, the extra weight due to the much larger battery is very noticeable. But it isn't really a problem when normal gaming with two hands thankfully. Area 5 is that while the Dolby Atmos speakers on the Ally X are just as incredible as on the original Ally, they did seem quieter and less pronounced for some reason. It took me a while to figure it out but this can now be fixed by simply going into some settings that I covered in this vid, link below. At 6 is the fact that a free case wasn't included with the Ally X, which stings quite a bit as it does feel like a premium product in so many other areas, like the RG letters embedded into the grip for example. So to not have one especially when the main competitors like the Steam Deck OLED does kind of sucks. Linked to this at 7 is that only a 65 watt charger is included in the box when the Ally X is capable of a full 100 watt fast charger. So again it kind of sucks we have to buy our own like I did with this awesome Anchor one if we want to fully utilise the fast charging capabilities of the Ally X. At 8 is the Ally X's Achilles heel just as the original Ally in that sleep and resume functionality just isn't that great. It's pretty glitchy and just very hit and miss, although this isn't Asus's fault with it being a huge disadvantage of using Windows. Many of you will know that installing SteamOS through Bazite is already a true solution to this. And also let's not forget that Valve officially making SteamOS available without going down the third party Bazite route is right around the corner too. Although on a recent community poll, you awesome views are very mixed on how excited you actually are for this. At 9 is a problem I wasn't expecting in that my left thumb naturally fell away to the right of the thumbstick and it took a good few days to adjust to bringing it back to where the left thumbstick is located. This is really weird as I never really had this problem with my original ally and I don't know why this is. Perhaps it's due to spending many hours on the Steam Deck OLED when my left thumb fell into this position naturally. Let us know if you've had this problem in the comments or maybe it's just me. At 10 is a small niggle, in that you know how I said I love the matte black finish, which I do, the only downside is that it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Maybe I've got a sweaty finger issue, but it's no big problem really, I just keep a microfiber cloth handy. And finally at 11 is the price, in that 799 is steep, I'm not going to lie. I do think it's worth it, but that 699 would have been much more palatable for a lot of people. Although saying that it appears the Ally X is extremely popular, as another issue is that it seems sold out in many places like Curry's here in the UK. Let's circle back to the 13th and best feature of the Ally X which is the battery, and I have a test for this inspired by this lovely lady. <coughs> Yes folks, just like our YouTuber hero Russ at Retro Game Corpse, he has his D-pad Contra test, I have my own test called the PTT HTT, which stands for the Pete Talks Tech Hot Tub Test. On my old ally I'd have to trail the charge into the tub which, um, yeah it wasn't ideal to be honest, and as us OG ally users know we kinda needed to be plugged in otherwise our gaming sessions would be very short due to the horrific battery life. In this one example here, I started gaming in my hot tub at 8pm and finishing over 4 hours later and this is why the Ally X is a true paradigm shift in handheld gaming in that we no longer need to worry about battery. The battery life is so good in fact that it now matches the incredible battery on the Steam Deck OLED. While at Asus HQ there may be some departments that require improvement, like the RMA department, we absolutely have to give full credit to the Asus engineers to the phenomenal job in listening to all of our feedback and improvement on the original Ally in every single area in just this past one year to develop the Ally X. And it is for this reason why I cannot recommend the Ally X enough, you will absolutely love it. 
And as usual, it is you awesome viewers which are far more eloquent than I could ever be. Like whatever with Alex, who very correctly states that videos do not do it justice. It is such a drastic difference. Jimmy Timber is absolutely right on the money in that this is what should have been released originally last year, instead of the beta version we got with the original Ally. And finally, Adolf Billick, who like me has owned a huge amount of handhelds, but the Ally X is the best handheld ever made. As for those thinking of upgrading from the original Ally to the Ally X, try and sell it like I did to CEX here in the UK and just go for it. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I'd love to know if you're thinking of getting the Ally X, and also if you have got one, then how would you rate it? Let us know in the comments. And as a thank you for watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. Things are going to work out for you. Everything you are stressing about won't even matter soon. A long way to change is coming your way. Let go of the old and embrace this new energy. If you're going through a really tough situation, then hang in there. You've got this. Remember that tough times are only temporary and great things are on the way. So stay encouraged today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new here and loved it. And if you want to check out that 14 step optimization guide, then click the top right and the bottom right for the emulation guide. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.